Fat Puppy here, and I'm just letting you know I love being Catholic. <clears throat> what do I love about being Catholic? The reasons are many. Number one is the history of the Catholic Church, in the, particularly in the beginning. This is the church that the apostles carried on that Jesus founded. I like the fact that you can look up the writings of those who were trained by the apostles, and you'll find out they're very Catholic in their nature, talking about the Eucharist and its nature. These are people that were trained by the apostles. They would know what the apostles meant. They would know what Jesus meant. Very Catholic sounding. I like the fact that when you walk into a Catholic church, that generally you should be greeted with silence. But that, I don't mean people are unfriendly. They're praying. It's not a time for uh, socializing, even though that does happen some. Generally speaking, when you walk into a Catholic church, you're going to find people praying. I like that when you walk in, you dip your hand in what's called holy water, and you cross yourself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is a reminder of your baptism. I don't know why the Protestant churches ditched this. I don't see nothing in it that's um, that the Protestant churches would disagree with as far as doctrinally speaking. It's also a prayer and a blessing, totally ditched by the Protestants. I like that when you get further down the aisle before you sit, you kneel and you, you bow to the cross. And again, you say, Name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or you might say, uh, My Lord and my God. Then you slide into your bench and then you pray. I like the fact that when the priest walks in from the back, there's like a little, eh, it's a procession, a bit of a parade, carrying the cross, carrying the Bible for everybody to see that the Bible. Um, is what we follow. He comes from the back. This is um, a signal, a signifying, not to say a signal, but a signifying that God chose a common man to uh, lead the people. He chose a man from the back who walks to the front, assumes the role of the priest. I like the fact that our songs are thoroughly based in doctrine that they are checked before they are used in a Catholic church. I say that. There are some that are a little more modernistic in their approaches, and they may not be. But I don't know if any that are counter to what we believe in. I like the fact that they have what they call altar servers. These are people who help serve at the altar. They help the priest in his duties. I like the fact that our songs... Oh, I didn't mention that. I like the fact, as a matter of fact, I go into a time of awesome reverence and awe when this happens. When the priest says the blessing that uh, blesses the, the bread and the wine to turn it into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, I like the fact that we are so scripturally based. And when Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood, that we know it's not just a symbol or that the communion might have a little power to it, the spiritual, that when Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood, we believe it. So much so that when Jesus said that to the crowds, that most of them walked away. And he turned to the disciples. He said, you going to leave me too? Peter said, where will we go? You had the words of truth. They might not have understood everything he was talking about, but they knew he had the words of truth. I like the fact that the baptismal pool is usually in the back. It's not a pool, it's a bowl. Now, I know there are arguments about dunking and not dunking. For the record, the church does believe submersion is, is perfectly fine. They, they believe in that. Some Catholic churches do uh, submerge. But I like the fact that, generally speaking, the baptismal is in the back. And this is to signify your entrance into the church. Your entrance to the body of Christ is through baptism. Now, I know we can get argue a little bit about repentance and all that, and that does, yes. If you're an adult or, or even a younger person but not an adult, repentance is required. That's part of confession and baptism. I like the fact that they have kneeling benches, which encourage you to pray. I like the beauty of the Catholic Church. I don't like is the fact that many Protestant church, churches have decided that beauty is not of God, which is crazy. They've stripped their churches of the beauty. You might find churches with stained glass windows, but that's about all you're going to find. 
I like the fact that the Catholic Church has beautiful statues, beautiful stained glass windows. And they're not just pretty. They tell a story. Each one tells a scriptural story. And this is a hangover from the fact that there was a time when most of the world was illiterate. And so you looked at those windows and the story was in the window. As a matter of fact, most of the world is still illiterate. illiterate. I like the fact that back in the day, the churches were built to be very pretty and very nice. And one reason for this is not just reflection of God's beauty, but also there was a time when your average person didn't see a place of beauty. They lived in houses that were uh, in terrible shape. They could go to the church and they could see beauty. This would be reflective to them of the beauty of heaven. I like that. I hope you do too. I like the fact that when the church service or the mass, when the mass ends, they say, go and spread the gospel. Every one of them, go and spread the gospel. I seen one deacon that would pro excuse me would proclaim it loudly. Go and proclaim the gospel. I like that. Again, I like the history of the church. Now there have been some bad popes that have messed up. Uh, not the church did not mess up the church. Uh, the single biggest argument against the Catholic Church is the papal system. Because it has produced some bad popes. I readily admit, and any Catholic will, there have been some evil popes. But you know what? They've not changed any teaching. They went down in history for who they were. Sinners. Many of them on the road to hell. As a matter of fact, there was a Catholic years and years and years ago, I'm talking probably over a thousand years ago, that said the road to hell is paved with the skulls of bishops and popes and priests. See, we know, we recognize this. But I like the fact that the Catholic Church has remained unchanged through the centuries. I like the fact that the messages are rather short. Now, there was a time when if you told a good, deep message, I could sit there for an hour and I'd be fine. And I would still be that way. But they recognize the fact that not everybody has the ability to go deep. They recognize that fact. So their message, I don't want to say shallow, they're not shallow. They're just short and to the point. They don't feel the need to repeat a point several times during a message. But to counter that, the church has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of deep teaching that you can go to. You may not find it in the pulpit, but if you look for it, you can go to it. And given my years of looking for deep messages and searching out the scriptures of God, I can tell you a person who's looking for deep, they will find deep. I love the Catholic Church. I love what it stands for and I love what it does. And you know what? If you love it, how about leave a message below and tell me what you like about it. And don't forget to like this and subscribe to this. Y'all have a good day.